G'day guys, it's Kane from Kane's Trains here, coming at you from my railway room. Now, this week we're looking at chapter 11 of John Wilson's upcoming book, The Break of Gage, A Social History. Now, in chapter 11 of this book, John discusses the railways in Tasmania and Victoria, and the gauges they had. Now, a fun fact for you, Tasmania has had the most railway gauges of any colony and yet it still hasn't had the 4 foot 8.5 inch standard gauge. Now, something different this week. We're featuring discussion with the fantastic James Andinopoulos. Now, when he's not busy being a qualified fireman with the Steam Ranger Heritage Railway, or a member of the Archives team at the National Railway Museum, James, in his spare time, colorizes old black and white photographs. And this is why John has contacted him. James has colorized a number of images in this book, and we're going to interview him today to look at his technique and what got him into it. Hope you enjoy. I began colorizing photos mainly because I wanted to sort of bring them to life and just try and get a historical, um, accurate colorization of a photo. And it started off me doing it manually, and. I used to scour the web to see if there's someone who's magically made a automatic colorizer, but the technology was just coming in with neural networks and um, artificial intelligence. Um, but basically, I've always had quite an interest in um, old photos, mainly uh, railway related and film. Um, and it's quite interesting when you get photos from an era where there is uh, color was available and black and white. And black and white photography is so clear, and black and white can really be. Um, a magical image but um, it's good to see uh, history come alive and I like to reference my material best as possible to make it look accurate and have a, a real feeling about it so um, yeah it's sort of like a pastime for me I don't really do it full time I don't do it um, every day I just do it when I feel bored and it's just a good way to relax if I'm stupidly bored but I'm not really that bored these days as I'm pretty busy as I haven't done one in a while until John came along and uh, asked me to do some for his book. The biggest challenge in colorization um, is probably getting the right tones. Um, the lighting doesn't matter too much as it will automatically um, fill in but getting the right color um, so that's quite well done. Um, I understand the SAR colors quite well and what they should be and that's a great help to the National Rail Museum, uh, Andrew Peters, who's an absolute livery expert, and uh, I match it online to the British Standard Paint, uh, as the SAR would have used, and we get it as best as possible and as close as possible when I fill it in with my program. Uh, the program I use is GIMP, and it's fantastic for colorizing pixel by pixel. Um, so yeah, just getting the right getting the colors right because if you get them wrong it doesn't look right and you have a sort of uh, an instant where you colored something and it's the wrong color and then you find a, a piece of paper like a chief mechanical engineer docket that tells you hey it's meant to be this color lining or the loco is this color and when you change it to that color the, the image just pops and you go aha I knew something was off so you get uh, instances like that as well now John did provide me with some images of the um, uh, Darjeeling and uh, Montezuma railways. I've never colorized uh, an engraving before but what I do these days I usually color the locomotives and the consists myself and we'll leave artificial intelligence into the backgrounds because it does such a good job it understands what trees are, knows what railway tracks are, knows what ballast is, knows what the sky is, um, it knows how to get all those tones right based on the image which is what you want uh, I used to do the backgrounds before, so I chucked the engravings into the automatic colorizer, as I told John, and I was quite surprised. They came out okay. Um, that's probably the best you can get. With colorizing and engraving can be very tricky, just because of it being an engraving. Just trying to get it to look um, correct, uh, as it's not a photo, it's an engraving. Um, so that was quite easy, but with the um, Montezuma Falls shot, that was quite a challenge as uh, John and I had to track down what sort of livery these locations have been in. The carriages were quite simple, the usual um, red or brown, uh, sort of like a Venetian colour. Um, the locos we found, uh, a, a educated guess would have been a green with a gold lining, so that's what I went with. I went through a few sites and uh, Tasmanian modelling forums and um, with 
both both could find that green would have been the colour uh, that would suit. I first attempted digital colouring of black and white images back in 2013, but I didn't really do too much with them at the start. And then again in 2016, uh, I began to post some of these images on the South Australian Railways um, Enthusiast Facebook group and got some very encouraging feedback. This feedback basically gave me the incentive to not only continue with the idea, but undertake extensive research to making these photographs as historically correct as possible. Uh, other than my real 9 to 5 work, I, uh, my spare time is taken up with Steam Ranger Heritage Railway, uh, which I help out on Saturdays with Mecca Handle for Services team. I'm also a fireman there as well, and being on a footplate is probably the best place to be in the world in my eyes, so <laughs> quite enjoyable. Uh, so I don't really get a lot of free time, but I do find it quite relaxing to sit back and colorize old railway photographs when I get a minute too. Uh, the one major resource uh, I had that was available um, and, and able to assist me uh, with the endeavor uh, was a good friend of mine, Andrew Peters, who's a collection manager of the archives audio visual collection at the National Rail Museum, Port Adelaide. I uh, occasionally volunteer um, when I can uh, my time as a member of NRM Archives visual team. I'm um, also the liaison between the Australian Railway Historical Society, uh, South Australia Division, and the National Railway Museum Archives for uh, archival purposes, as it's you, you've got to preserve and collect and, and get anything we can and make sure it is preserved correctly and digitised for our future. But anyway, Andrew uh, has been there forever and has been very supportive of me and has allowed me to be able to pick his brains and things. Uh, he's yielded answers that I didn't know, and uh, if he's not sure on something, he usually has an idea where to find the clues to get an answer. His knowledge in railways is very in-depth, uh, but his understanding of paints, colours and livery is truly impressive, uh, as he under, has undertaken extensive research for all the recent major restoration at the, projects at the NRM, as well as being a project manager on most of them. Um, now, artificial intelligence, as I mentioned earlier, AI has come a long way over the years. Uh, back in 2016, I did stumble upon an automatic colorization software. Uh, it was quite new at the time, being AI, it was still learning. Uh, obviously, didn't know what a steam locomotive is. Uh, for example, you know, if you've got a 500B working the way up and the farmer's got it a bit snotty, the funnel's black, and would think it's a tree. Paint it green, so that's not right. Uh, you know, I think it's a shrub because of its, its shape. Um, so it's not what you want. Um, so I only strictly did a locomotives and a concert myself. Um, due to backgrounds taking such a long time, but AI started learning to do it. And as I previously mentioned, AI can do backgrounds, no worries. And I've actually seen real color photos or slides from the 1950s and it's pretty close. So it's doing a good job. Um, so yeah, all, all the photographs that are presented here uh, have had automatic colorization in the backgrounds uh, while I color the locomotives and consists and sometimes down to the pixel depending on the original resolution of the photograph. Um, but yeah, my, you will see my, my latest colorizations compared to my first have come a long way with being picky on certain areas and extra details, you know, going for the copper and the brass, uh, making sure everything looks correct. Um, so yeah, it's truly mind-blowing to see how they pop out and maybe how it'll look like um, back in the early days. So, there you go. A big thank you to James for lending his time to me this week, but also for his contributions to the book, the museum, Steam Ranger, and of course, the railway interest scene with his colorized photographs. Now, the photo on the screen right now is from the picturesque Atlas of Australia, and it's an engraving that James has colorized for John. Now, next week's video, we'll be looking at a series of these engravings in the picturesque atlas of Australia, of which John has the entire set. Now, thank you very much for watching. In the description will be a website you can follow to read up more on this book and put your interest in on the email list. Thank you very much.